We need better Linux marketing. You hear this all the time, especially in the last few months. The calls for Linux to do a better job of marketing itself have really ramped up. I've seen a lot of news articles, lots of blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos about this very topic. My response to these calls is, what is this Linux that you speak of? Let's discuss. So it's the same old story. Someone discovers Linux, makes the switch, they're blown away by Linux. And naturally, they start wondering why no one else knows about Linux. Why hasn't this whole Linux thing just caught fire? And why hasn't everybody switched? It's so clearly better than Windows and Mac, and yet no one outside of this small little niche of people that are using it know about it. Right? And it's just this small, special group of people that kind of have the secret Linux knowledge. So naturally, these people that just jump to Linux, you know, jump to these conclusions that Linux must suck at marketing. And that if we could just present ourselves to the public in a better way than the masses, they would come rushing in. I think this is naive. I would assert that Linux and, quote, the Linux community are far different from other kinds of communities you may be used to. Linux, we are not a monolithic block. We don't all share the same goals. We don't all speak the same language. We don't all speak with one voice. So no, we are not a true community. We are an organization of individuals, really. We're like a, a loose cabal of people who have specific interests and goals in regards to Linux, but those interests and goals, they're individually motivated. They're not shared by the group as a whole, so there's no single unified goal of, quote, the Linux community. Even the goal of making Linux more popular isn't universally agreed upon within this community. There is a not insignificant percentage of Linux users out there that are happy to be part of that 2 to 3% market share, and they prefer Linux to remain the small niche operating system for the elite. Of course, I'm making some assumptions here about this community because... It's necessary to make assumptions since there's no real single point of contact. There's no central hub for all of us in the Linux community to go to to discuss and agree on all things Linux, right? Linux is different things to different people, right? Linux, a software engineer thinks very differently about Linux than, say, the competitive gamer, than the professional writer, than the Instagram model, right? <laughs> There are very few generalizations that can be made about such a loose collection of individuals. So, I often hear people say that the problem, the real problem with Linux is choice. L-O-L, -L, right? <laughs> choice isn't the problem with Linux. I mean, it's just ludicrous that people make this assumption. Free and open source equates to choice. That is what it means to be free and open source. It means to have choice. Choice is implied when we talk about free and open source software. Without open source, without choice, Linux wouldn't even exist. So, while making assumptions about the future of Linux is kind of tricky, one thing you can be certain of. If Linux was ever to become closed source, it would die immediately, right? It would die a quick and almost instant death. We've seen this in the past with other free and open source software projects moving to the proprietary side of things. This, it, it never ends good for them. Why? It's because if there's one thing this community holds in the highest regard, it's choice. So choice is not the problem. I find it funny that so many out there talking about Linux marketing as if there's this one unified Linux community, one Linux company out there that can or will push some non-existent singular Linux agenda. It's a full stream, right? It's a pipe dream. There's This will never happen. This can't happen. Uh, just the inherent nature of Linux and the Linux community, this it goes completely against what we are. So this kind of marketing that these people are wishing for, you know, professional-made TV spots with great branding promoting this consumer-grade operating system, that's not what much of, quote, the Linux community even want, right? There's a large portion of the Linux community, they don't care about marketing, they don't care about branding, right? If we cared about branding, we wouldn't choose a lot of the names for our software projects, right? We love horrible names that are just 
terrible for branding. We like GNU or GNU slash Linux. You know, what a horrible branding that is. Or GIMP or my favorite music player, Deadbeat, for my second favorite music player, NCMCPCPPC. We adore reverse backronyms, right? We love arguing about the merits of the free software movement and the open source movement. We argue about the morality of proprietary software and digital rights management. And quite frankly, we love our little civil wars here in the Linux community, right? We argue over everything, right? GNOME versus KDE, Arch versus Gentoo, Vim versus Emacs, Systemd versus really anything else. I mean, this is Linux, right? It's a splintered, fragmented group of individuals working together, but at the same time, working alone. This is what makes Linux so unbelievably fantastic. We are all so passionate about Linux, but at the same time, we're also passionate about Linux as we see it, right? As we wish it to be. And we all have very different views about what we want Linux to be. And we have the freedom to make it so with free and open source software, right? So yeah, we could all form one singular group and mindlessly work on this one single project and promote it to the world. We could standardize around one Linux distro, one desktop environment, one init system, etc. That might be better for marketing purposes. It might make us more popular, but that wouldn't make us better in terms of software, right? Quality of software does matter. And our fragmentation and the ability to work on all the different projects with different goals, that's our greatest strength. Just look at the quality of our free and open source software, right? Look at all the options you have, the flexibility you have with Linux. It's simply not possible without the free and open source software kind of mindset, you know, and that fragmented spirit that this community has. It's really quite beautiful when you think about it. To go against fragmentation is to go against the very principles of free and open source software and the very principles of Linux, right? It's literally the antithesis of what Linux is about. So don't worry about Linux ever becoming, quote, popular, right? Why, why do you need validation from others in regards to what operating system you choose to run? It reminds me of those kids in school that worry about being popular, you know, what kind of shoes should I buy, or what brand of shoes should I wear, what kind of speech pattern should I use when I'm around my buddies, what girls should I date, right? Linux isn't the cool kid. It's never been that cool kid. It's that pimply-faced dweeb that eats alone in the cafeteria. That's Linux. And that's okay, right? Because we all know how the story turns out. 20 years from now, that dweeb, he's going to be the CEO of that company he started sipping on sangrias on his 90-foot yacht every weekend, and all those good-looking jocks from high school will be fat, bald, bankrupt, those hot cheerleaders are going to be broken down and buttered face. I think my biggest complaint that I have with all these people out there crying for better Linux marketing is the who aspect, the who part of this equation. Who do these people want to invest their time and money in marketing this singular, non-existent vision of Linux to the world? Are, are we going to force somebody to do this work? No, of course not, right? You can't force people to do this. So some of these guys are out there, they are saying that the community should be marketing itself. The Linux community should be doing the heavy lifting. The community should be out there promoting itself. Have you seen the Linux community? Have you talked to people in the Linux community? The last thing you want is this community marketing for us. I mean, can you imagine the Arch guys doing marketing? There'd be billboards everywhere saying RTFM and TV ads saying, get off Ubuntu, you peasant. Uh, before I go, this show was made possible by Alex, Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplow, Corbinian, Lambda, Mitchell, Natek, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sean, Stephanie, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. These guys are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, the show wouldn't be possible. Also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen. All those names you see on the screen that help support me over on Patreon. Again, without each and every one of those folks, the show wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.